Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Wilson, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. 637 on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. An hour from now, we'll talk to Trevor Maddox. Redskins lose last night, 18-16 in a close one. Devastating loss, really, to the Cowboys. We'll get Trevor's take on that about an hour from now. We've got Jake Tapper on the show this morning in the 8 o'clock hour. And Larry Kudlow from CNBC at 836. Jim Bethacoukas is on the phone right now. Columnist, blogger, for American Enterprise Institute, now at AEI. Mm-hmm. And, New gig there. Uh, so how's it going, Jimmy, over there? Is, does the coffee taste level? What's I mean, what's what's it like over at AEI? Is it nice? Mr. Pethokoukas, are you there? So nice that the phones don't even work. He's actually drinking the coffee. He He's, can't answer he, you. It's, it's, it's a secret. Well, we'll try to reconnect <laughs> with uh, Jim Pethokoukas. I, I just hate it when technology goes against us. Uh, it, the the it technology happens. of the landline? Uh, that's right. Uh-huh. Working against us every as, as day. The, uh, that's a sophisticated technology they call a POTS line, <laughs> Plano television, <laughs> yeah. ser- a telephone service. No, we can, can you hear us now, Jimmy? Uh, I can hear there you. There we go. There you go. Oh, Next time I'm doing it all by shortwave. <laughs> there you go. Walkie talkie. So how is the new gig? How do you like it over at AEI? Oh, it's uh it's great. Um I couldn't I couldn't ask for a better job, but to be honest, so far I've just been filling out like a bunch of human resources yeah, for it's, that's, it's a that's miserable help. thing. That's the way it is. Oh my god. But do you get to eat in the cafeteria? Uh I do. Yes. Uh, yeah, see, the I delight, hear it's the, very the, good. The delightful AEI uh <laughs> cafeteria which is uh, well well, we're now without washing for being mm-hmm. first class. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, there you stuff. go. So we're here. So, all right, so here's what I want to know. Of all the Republican candidates out there, and God knows there are a lot of them, who's, who's your favorite when it comes to economic policy? Um, well, you know, uh, the, one, the, the person has, I think, at this point, I think one, one of the boldest policies is the guy about 1% in the polls, <laughs> which is John Huntsman. Right, right. Uh, who's endorsed uh, the, the tax plan or the president's... Uh, uh, commission, which would get rid of uh, pretty much all tax breaks and tax deductions at really lower rates. He's a, he's taken that. He's slapped on the the Ryan plan with it. It it's kind of like he's kind of like taking the best of like the off the shelf uh, uh, plans and put them uh, put them together. Um, uh, you know, Rod- Romney has a, I think, a, a 2,048 uh, point plan. <laughs> right. uh, I'm only through point 1,037, <laughs> so I can't really give an exhaustive answer. Though I, so far, it looks very strong. Uh, though actually, the Romney has a lot of points, and I think all the points are actually pretty good. Uh, I, I, I would like something a bit bolder, particularly on the tax side, mm-hmm. uh, uh, for him. Uh, though again, uh, it is uh, it is long. It is a long plan. <laughs> what about what about that Herman Cain nine 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 deal? The nine nine nine. How many nines are there? I, have, I, have I really think there's lost. three nines. Three nines. There are three nine. right. I think we added a nine overnight. <laughs> uh, listen, I, I, I think generally the idea of uh, uh, anything anything that uh, lower anything that lowers rates is good. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what we're what we're going to do about again about sort of the morass of deductions. Uh, uh, I, I need to hear a bit more about what, what. Actually, this is true for even Huntsman, all these guys, uh, who, who they say they say nice things about Paul Ryan's plan to fix entitlements. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually think we need to go farther than what Paul Ryan said and maybe start his plan sooner and and uh, also do some more things about Social Security. Interesting that Paul Ryan actually today is going to give a big speech about what he wants to do about health care, which right. I imagine is going to greatly uh, influence uh, the debate. Uh, but so far, so good. Let me ask you about, and I know, Jim, that you probably woke up this morning and there was a sigh of relief and you wiped your brow because you learned that the government shutdown has been averted, that the United States Senate finally took action to uh, pass a continued resolution. Hasn't this gotten all a little too silly? No, uh, listen, I didn't expect there to be a, uh, a shutdown, though I think it should be a, uh, an interesting symbol or sign uh, of, of how tough it is going to be for the, for the, to pass anything of consequence uh, between now and election day, yep. uh, anyone thinking that we're going to get some, you know, massive, uh, massive spending cut deal or some new massive stimulus plan, uh, I just don't think it's going to happen. I, 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 I don't think there's any momentum, any interest in Congress for that to happen right now. I think, I think this a little shutdown scare uh, is, an, is an, another sign of that. So anyone expecting that these are going to be a very productive next to 13 or 14 months. I think it's crazy. The silly season has begun. <laughs> oh, to, listen, uh, that, that's what I've been saying. We need, if, if something's going to get done, 
uh, on any of our big issues. It's not going to get done uh, with, with, the, with the election beginning to approach. It, this is going to be a very difficult time. So I know we have the president's plan. We have uh, the super committee going to happen. Uh, listen, if, if, if Moody's S and P, uh, if they're going to avoid another downgrade of U.S. debt, uh, if they're waiting for like you know big big stuff to come out of Washington, they must well go downgrade us right now because that ain't going to happen. Um, speaking of the president's plan, there's a new study out from a Harvard economist saying estimating that each job in the plan if they were created, would cost about $200,000. Uh, Tim Geithner, in an ABC News uh, interview, does not dispute this idea, says that that's the wrong way to measure the bill's worth. Is there a way to measure these bills' worth according to the administration? Because it hasn't been in jobs created either. Uh, I, I think the way to measure it is how has how many uh, approval rating points they think right. will add to uh, I think they'd like to measure it that way. I, I think the theory is that not only will it create jobs immediately, but somehow it will you know it will it will be a catalyst for the economy and it will supercharge the private sector so so government kind of can kind of hand off the baton of growth from government the private sector and then the private sector will sort of grow on its own much faster after that so it's not only creating jobs now it'll sort of you know ignite uh the larger economy uh that that has not been the case, not been what we've seen so no. far. In fact, uh, in fact, it may have created more stress in the private economy since now people are even that much more worried about uh, regulation policy, where all the where all this how all this debt's going to get paid back. Um, you know, this, this is that they're just throwing whatever they have against the wall and seeing uh, what sticks at this time. And uh, um, I, 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 I frankly would judge it by that two hundred thousand uh, per job. If you think that's a good, if you think that's a bargain, then hey, you should support the plan. All right, Jimmy, good to have you on. As always, enjoy the cafeteria food later today. <laughs> I will. Thanks, <laughs> Jim Bethacoukas from American Enterprise Institute, also an official CNBC contributor here with the morning.